in Edison, New Jersey. We're so glad that you're here with us, that you're gathering in home and, and online uh, with the St. Paul's community uh, and with your sisters and brothers in Christ uh, here and, and around the country. Uh, please take a moment to sign in, leave your name, let us know that you're here today. Uh, feel free within this service to interact with fellow worshipers, to share God's peace, uh, messages of, of love and encouragement with each other. If this is your first time worshiping at St. Paul's, uh, welcome, welcome into this community. Please let us know that this is your first time being here, or, or if you'd be interested in joining or becoming a member of St. Paul's, let us know that too, so we can get to know each other, answer any questions you might have about how you could be part of what God is doing uh, through this community, through St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Edison. Our service this morning begins with an order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. join me in praying Psalm 145 responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Amen. Second reading is from Romans, the seventh chapter. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children singing in the marketplace, calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wail, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and they say, Look, 
a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that weary and are heavy, carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, finally, a chance to rest, a holiday weekend, a weekend set aside to rest, to celebrate, to enjoy the independence that our ancestors won, to rest free and independent from their burdens, their weariness, their exhaustion, so that we can enjoy a better life in a better world. At least, that is the promise. Even if it is not our present and external reality on this weekend or any other weekend throughout the year, that is the promise. Rest, freedom from weariness and burdens, freedom to enjoy the life that God has given us all as a gracious gift from his loving hand. This holiday weekend, this Independence Day weekend, we hear Jesus stand up and address a crowd of poor, tired, and overburdened children of God. Jesus raises his voice and invites them all into the Sabbath rest of God's salvation and God's new creation. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus then invites them into a new way of living, following him into God's kingdom. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus says, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That is the promise of a new world, a new creation, a new life in, with, and under our Lord Jesus, the, the promise of true freedom, and it begins by coming to Jesus and hearing his gracious words of forgiveness. Jesus frees us from the bondage of our sin, the burden of our guilt, the burden of life, the life in which we find ourselves in a, in a perpetual case where we are bond, in bondage to sin and unable to free ourselves. Jesus takes that burden from us and sets us free sets us free to be what God created us to be, children of God, endowed with God's own gift of life, free to breathe the life-giving, life-sustaining breath of God, free to enjoy and to share in all of the fruits and all of the work of God's good and abundant creation. That is the promise that Jesus brings to us and gives us freely. So what burdens are you carrying today? What burdens have been laid upon your shoulders that have weighed you down to the point of exhaustion? What sin is keeping you from enjoying the life that God has given you as God's gift? What sin keeps you from enjoying all the benefits of rest and peace that come through knowing and experiencing the free forgiveness that Jesus gives? On the surface, I'm sure these burdens might look and sound like worries, like our fears, 
the burdens of all those things that make us anxious, but just below the surface, in those quiet times when we can hear our own inner soul crying out, just below that surface of those worries and fears and anxieties is all that other baggage that we carry. This unspeakable restlessness, the gnawing nameless guilt and shame, the unspeakable restlessness that makes us lash out in violence and frustration, or the many ways that we are all too conscious of that we daily and every minute fall short, fail, disappoint ourselves and our neighbors. And even more deeply than that, is the burden of living and moving and having our being in a world that has turned its back on God and God's ways. The burden of having to hold up all the traditions, all the systems, all of the powers that keep this world running contrary to God's own hopes and dreams for this world. Hopes and dreams of reconciliation and forgiveness, of freedom and life and salvation in Jesus Christ. Burdens. Burdens that are sins like racism, nationalism, a religious legalism that tears our world apart and all the while dulls our ears and our eyes to God's own revelation of justice, mercy, and peace that Jesus brings. We wear ourselves out every day resisting God and God's Christ. And yet once again, Jesus walks into our life and offers forgiveness. God's true forgiveness that not only sweeps away the sins of the past, but makes all things new. That not only forgives us for what's been done and what's been left undone, but, but the God who changes our hearts and our minds so that we are finally and at last once again pulling in the same direction as our God. That's what it means to submit to Christ's yoke, to follow him, to learn from him, his gentle and humble ways. It means being tied to Jesus so that as he works to create a new world according to God's will, that we are gently guided in that direction too. That as Jesus turns history towards its final goal and destination in God's great gift of resurrection and new life, that we too are turning, pushing, pulling in sync with our Lord. The great apostle Paul was once the zealous Saul. And he carried all of the heavy burdens of his people in exile. He carried all of the burdens of his traditions, all of the precepts of divine law. He had put them on his own back. And a zealous and righteous faith in him fueled and drove him to a murderous hatred. How restless he was. How filled with righteous zeal, but how weary he had become pushing and kicking and fighting against the God he thought he was so diligently serving until that day when Jesus revealed himself to Saul in a vision, blinding his eyes, knocking him to the ground. Jesus tells Saul that he was persecuting the promise of his own faith, fighting against God's own salvation, the very salvation he was working so hard and striving so hard to attain for himself. Jesus changed Saul. He removed the burden and turned him around. Jesus came in love and tied himself to Saul and then led him off in the opposite direction, which by the way, was the direction that Saul in his innermost being longed to move in deep, deep down. 
but he always lacked the power, the knowledge, the strength to move that way. This is our Independence Day weekend. And perhaps it is time for us to be changed as Saul was. To recognize that it is Jesus himself who has knocked us down, not to punish us, but to get our attention to forgive us, to remove our burden, to lift us up and turn us around so that we are moving in the same direction that Jesus is moving. Perhaps, perhaps on this weekend of rest, we might unclench our teeth, our jaws, our fists, and stop fighting God long enough to find our rest in the grace that he gives. Maybe, perhaps, on this holiday weekend, we can stop worrying just long enough to rest in God's abundant promise and presence in our life that we can stop guarding our heart and instead open it up to the changes and transformations that come to us when we die to, with Christ to sin so that we can be raised with Christ to live a new kind of life, a life that not only receives and cherishes the freedom and forgiveness, the relief and rest that Jesus gives, but works in an energizing work to give that freedom, to give that forgiveness, to provide that relief by lifting the burdens on the backs of people who have worked and labored and tired too long in this weary world. Holidays, holy days, are days set aside to rest. No matter what the calendar says, we will not find rest until we finally find that our hearts are at rest in the God who created us and set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, 
water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and lift us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, celebrating their nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed, especially those on our prayer list and whose names we speak aloud or in our hearts. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. We pray for this congregation, bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders, energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of God's peace with each other. Leave a message of peace in the comment section below and throughout this day, maybe throughout this weekend, uh, offer up your messages of peace, forgiveness, and wholeness in Jesus' name to everyone that you meet. Our worship now continues with the sharing of our gifts and our offerings. We give thanks and praise for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And for the sake of Jesus' ongoing mission and out of, out of gratitude for all that God has done and to be pulling and moving in the same direction that Jesus is in this world, we offer up also our offerings and gifts for the sake of God's mission. We have been entrusted to carry out this mission in Jesus' name, to bring the good news of Jesus to people in this community and around the world. Please take a minute of your time to make an electronic gift through St. Paul's website, www.stpauls-edison.org. While you're there, please consider making this a recurring gift so that that gift can continue to be given month after month for the sake of God's mission in the world. If you wish, you may also mail your gift and your offering to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 445 Old Post Road, Edison, New Jersey, 08817. Thank you. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for taking part in this ministry. Thank you. Let us pray. Into your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps, abide in us and alive in us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image, let your comfort strengthen your grace, renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light, eternal, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through the words of your Son. Give us the light that we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Some announcements before we go. First of all, uh, in talking about putting on Jesus' yoke, learning from him, two opportunities online each week, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock, Thursdays at 7 p.m., for you to put on that yoke to learn Jesus' humble and gentle ways. We continue to make our way through the Gospel of Matthew, learning what it is that Jesus says and does and offers us learning his way in this world. Please join those Bible studies online, sign up for them uh, by using the links in the email that you uh, have sent to you each week in your virtual bulletin. Bedtime prayers uh, are each night at nine o'clock also on Zoom. Uh, you'll also find the code to join those bedtime prayers every night at nine o'clock, uh, also found in your emailed uh, newsletter or virtual bulletin each week. If you don't receive our virtual bulletin, if you don't receive our newsletter, go to the St. Paul's website, go to the bottom of the page, sign up for that so that you can be sure to uh, receive uh, the latest news, information, and all kinds of, of things that are, are, are going on. Now that we're gathering in person and online in our homes and scattered, staying in touch is very, very important. Make sure that you read and check out each of those newsletters each week so you know what's going on in this community and how you can be part. Speaking of in-person gatherings, uh, the St. Paul's community continues to meet online and in our homes uh, by using these online means, either Facebook, our website, or YouTube page. Um, we'll do that until the developing, risk of developing or spreading COVID-19 is greatly diminished and probably even after that continue to be uh, reaching out online. But to supplement these online gatherings, we're offering in-person services. Our next in-person service will be a service of evening prayer with Holy Communion on Saturday evening, July 11th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, this will be an outdoor service and we ask that you would sign up for this service in advance. Uh, first of all, so we know how many people are coming and how those pieces fit together when we meet on the lawn. And also because this will be our first Holy Communion service, we need to prepare in advance the communion kits that'll be available for each worshiper. So we'll ask that you sign up, uh, give us the number of people that are attending and the number of people who will be receiving communion. Also, as an option within that service, as you leave on July 11th, you'll have the option of taking Holy Communion with you to share with members of your home, uh, members of your family, members of your, your pod who are unable to make it out for services of Holy Communion. Um, so please look for the sign up information for that uh, in your virtual bulletin this week and also in an email reminder that will go out in the week ahead. Look for that, sign up for the in-person service if you wish, uh, and then come out next Saturday, July 11th at 5.30 for that in-person service. If you, if you need to, if you choose to uh, continue to worship in your home using these online services as well. If you would like to donate food to the food pantry, you can bring your non-perishable food items and place your donations in the bin that's by the double glass doors outside of the lounge. If you'd like to volunteer in the food pantry, please call Jane Brady. We need volunteers for client registration, for delivery, and for running food out to clients' vehicles. And now, receive God's blessing. And know that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. in this service today who volunteered to read uh, those who led our worship to Jacob to Luke to Stephanie for their work in providing music uh, to Ginny for providing our music uh, scans to the instrumental group for for uh, their offering as well thank you uh, for participating in this worship service God bless your uh, holiday weekend and may God give you that rest you so desperately desire now go in peace Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.